Hi there. We are on day 257 of our Through the Bible in One Year. Hey, it's September 13th. And today we are starting the book of Daniel. Daniel is a very important book. He talks a lot about um, the future and revelations. In fact, when I studied revelations, I started with books in in Daniel, when I did a whole series that took months to go through Revelations. So we're going to start Daniel, and you might, um, he was in Babylon during the 70 years of captivity that we've been reading about all along here. That's where we're at in history. After, after Nebuchadnezzar, God let him conquer Israel and Judah and haul their people away and all and they were in there for 70 years. And Daniel went to Babylon with three of his friends. You've probably heard of them. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So, let's start the book of Daniel. And this is going to be interesting because I was like <clears throat> famous character, right? No. Daniel's captivity in Babylon. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, King of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and laid siege to it. The Lord handed Jehoiakim, king over, king of Judah, over to him, along with some of the vessels from the house of God. Nebuchadnezzar carried them to the land of Babylon, to the house of his God, and put the vessels in the treasury of his God. <clears throat> the king ordered Ashpenaz, the chief of the court officials, to bring some of the Israelites from the royal family and from the nobility. Young men, without any physical defect, good-looking, suitable for instruction and all wisdom, knowledgeable, perceptive, and capable of serving at the king's palace, and to teach them the Chaldean language and literature. The king assigned them daily provisions from the royal food and from, from the wine that he drank. There they were to be trained for three years, and at the end of that time they would serve in the king's court. Among them, from the descendants of Judah, were Daniel, Hannah, Mishael, and Azariah. The official chief gave them other names. <laughs> He gave the name Bel Belshazzar to Daniel, Shadrach to Hananiah, Meshach to Mishael, and Abednego to Azariah. Oh, that was their given names from Nebuchadnezzar. Faith, faithfulness in Babylon. Daniel determined that he would not defile himself with the king's food or with the wine that he drank, so he asked permission from the chief official not to defile himself. God granted Daniel favor and compassion from the chief official. Yet he said to Daniel, My lord, the king assigned your food and drink. I am afraid that what would happen if he saw your faces looking thinner than those of the other young men your age? <clears throat> you would endanger my life with the king. So Daniel said to the guard, whom the chief official had assigned to, to Daniel, Hanaya, Mishael, and Azariah, Please test your servant for ten days. Let us be given vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then examine our appearance at the, and the appearance of the young men who are eating the king's food and deal with your servants based on what you see. He agreed with them about this and tested them for ten days. At the end of ten days, they looked better and, and healthier than all the young men who were eating the king's food. So the guard continued to remove their food and the wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables. Mm. Faithfulness rewarded. <clears throat> God gave these four young men knowledge and understanding in every kind of literature and wisdom. God just gave them all the languages. Wouldn't that be cool? Daniel also understood visions and dreams of every kind. At the end of the time that the king had said to present to them, the chief official presented them to Nebuchadnezzar. The king interviewed them, and among all of them, no one was found equal to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So they began to serve in the same king's court. In every matter of wisdom and understanding, the king consulted them about. He found them ten times better than all the diviner priests and mediums in his entire kingdom. Daniel remained there until the first year of King Cyrus. Nebuchadnezzar's Dream <clears throat> In the second year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams that troubled him, and sleep deserted him. So the king gave orders to summon the diviner priest, medium sources, and Chaldeans to tell the king his dreams. When they came and stood before the king, he said to them, I have had a dream, and I am anxious to understand it. The Chaldeans spoke to the king. Aramaic begins here. May the king live forever. Tell your servants the dream, and we will give the interpretation. The king replied to the Chaldeans, My word is final. If you don't tell me my dream and its interpretation, you will be torn limb from limb. Wow. <clears throat> and your houses will be made a garbage dump. <laughs> but if you make the dream and its interpretation known to me, you will receive gifts and reward and great honor from me. So, make the dream and its interpretation known to me. 
They answered a second time, May the king tell the dreams to his servants, and we will give the interpretation. The king replied, I know for certain you are trying to gain some time, because you see that my word is final. If you don't tell me the dream, there is one decree for you. You have conspired to tell me something false or fraudulent until the situation changes. So tell me the dream, and I will know you can give me its interpretation. He's not going to tell them what he dreamed. He wants them to tell him what he dreamed. <clears throat> the Chaldean answered, No one on earth can make known what the king requests. Consequently, no king, however great or powerful, has ever asked anything like this of any divine or priest, medium, or Chaldean. What the king is asking is so difficult that no one can make it known to him except the gods, whose willing is not with mortals. Dwelling is not with mortals. Because of this, the king became violently angry and gave orders to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. This decree was issued that the wise men were to be executed, and they searched for Daniel and his friends to execute them. <laughs> yeah. Then Daniel responded with tact and discretion to Arioch, the commander of the king's guard, who had gone out to execute the wise men of Babylon. He asked Arioch, the king's officer, why is the decree from the king so harsh? The Arioch explained the situation to Daniel. So Daniel went and asked the king to give him some time so that he could give the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and told his friends and I, Mishael and Azariah, about the matter, urging him to ask God, God of heaven for mercy concerning this mystery so Daniel and his friends would not be killed with the rest of the Babylon's wise men. The mystery was then revealed to Daniel in a vision at night, and Daniel praised God of heaven and declared, May the name of God be praised forever and ever, for wisdom and power belong to him. He changes the times and season. He removes the kings and establishes kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals the deep and hidden things. He knows what is in the darkness, and light dwells with him. I offer thanks and praise and praise to you, God of my fathers, because you have given me wisdom and power, and you and now you let me know what we asked of you. You have let us know the king's mystery. Therefore Daniel went to Arioch, whom the king had assigned to destroy these wise men of Babylon. He came to them and said, don't kill the wise men of Babylon. Bring me before the king, and I will give him the interpretation. Then Ariak quickly brought Daniel before the king and said to him, I have found a man among the Judean exiles who can let the king know the interpretation. The king said in reply to Daniel, whose name is Belshazzar, Are you able to tell me the dream I had and its interpretation? Daniel answered the king, No wise man, medium, divine, or priest, or astrologer is able to make known the king the, myst the, king, the mystery I asked about. Yeah. But there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries. And he has let... And he has let King Nebuchadnezzar know what will happen in the last days, your dream and the visions that came into your mind as you lay in bed with ease. Your majesty, while you were in your bed, thoughts came into your mind and what will happen in the future. The revealer of mysteries has let you know what will happen. As for me, this mystery has been revealed to me, not because I have more wisdom than anyone living, but in order that the interpretation might be made known to the king and that you may understand the thoughts of your mind. The dream's interpretation. <laughs> My king, as you were watching, a colossal statue appeared. The statue, tall and dazzling, was standing in front of you, and its appearance was terrifying. Oh. The head of the statue was pure gold. Its chest and arms were silver. Its stomach and thighs were bronze. Its legs were iron, and its feet were, were partly iron and partly fired clay. <clears throat> as you were watching, a stone broke off without a hand touching it, struck the statue on its feet of iron and clay, and crushed them. Then the iron, the fired clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were shattered and became like chaff from the summer threshing floor. The wind carried them away, and not a trace of them could be found. But the stone that struck the statue became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. All right. A stone, you know who that is? <laughs> this is a dream. Now we will tell the king its interpretation. Your majesty, you are king of kings. The God of heaven has given you sovereignty, power, strength, and glory. Wherever people live, or wild animals, or birds of the air, he has sent them over to you and made you ruler over them all. You, you are the head of gold. After you, there will rise another kingdom, inferior to yours, and then another, a third kingdom of bronze, which will rule the whole earth. <clears throat> a fourth kingdom will be as strong as iron, for iron crushes and shatters everything, and like iron that smashes, it will crush and smash all the others. And you always wonder why it said Jesus would rule for a thousand years with a set rod of iron, right? Iron crushes everything. Interesting, huh? Iron crushes the shadows, everything and like iron that like iron that smashes, it will crush and smash all the others. You saw the feet and toes, partly of the potter's fire clay and partly of iron. It will be it will be a divided kingdom, though some of the strength of iron will be in it. You saw the iron mixed with clay, and that the toes and the feet were partly iron and partly fired clay. 
Part of the kingdom will be strong, and part of it will be brittle. You saw the iron mixed with clay. The peoples will mix with one another, but will not hold together, just as iron does not mix with fired clay. In the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. <laughs> this is future stuff, right? And this kingdom will not be left to, to another people. It will crush all these kingdoms and bring them to an end, but it will itself endure forever. You saw a stone break off from the mountain without a hand touching it. And it crushed the iron, bronze, fire, clay, silver, and gold. The great God has told the king what will happen in the future. This dream is true, and its interpretation is certain. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar's response. <clears throat> the king Nebuchadnezzar fell down and paid homage to Daniel and gave orders to present him an offering and incense to him. The king said to Daniel, Your God is indeed God of gods, Lord of, Lord of kings, and a revealer of mysteries, since you were able to reveal this mystery. Then the king promoted Daniel and gave him many generous gifts. He made him ruler over the entire province of Babylon and chief governor over all the wise men of Babylon. At Daniel's request, the king appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to manage the province of Babylon, but Daniel remained at the king's court. Nebuchadnezzar's gold statue. Pretty cool, huh? <clears throat> King Nebuchadnezzar made a gold statue 90 feet high and 9 feet wide. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. King Nebuchadnezzar sent word to assemble the, <clears throat> the satraps, prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, and magistrates, and all the rulers of the provinces to attend the dedication of the statue King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So the satraps, prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, and magistrates, and all the rulers of the provinces assembled for the dedication of the statue the king had set up. Then they stood before the statue Nebuchadnezzar had set up. <clears throat> a herald loudly proclaimed, People of every nation and language, you are commanded when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zyre, lyre, harp, and drum, and every kind of music you are to fall down and worship the gold statue that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. But whoever does not fall down and worship it will immediately be, be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. You've heard of that, right? Therefore, when all the people heard the sound of the horn, Horn, flute, zither, lyre, and harp, every kind of music. People of every nation and language fell down and worshipped the gold statue the king Nebuchadnezzar had set up. The furnace and placing fire. Getting right into it, aren't we? Some Chaldeans took this occasion to come forward and maliciously accuse the Jews. They said the king Nebuchadnezzar made the king live forever. You, as king, have issued a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, and harp, and every kind of music must fall down and worship the gold statue. Whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into the furnace of blazing fire. There are some Jews you have appointed to manage a province, Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men have ignored you, the king. They do not serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. Then, in a furious rage, Nebuchadnezzar gave the orders to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king. Nebuchadnezzar asked them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Is it true that you do not serve my gods and worship the gold statue I have set up? Now, if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, sire, lion, and every kind of music, fall down and worship the statue I... I may, but if you do not worship it, you will be immediately thrown into the furnace of blazing fire. And who is the God who can rescue you from my power? <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to give you an answer to this question. If the God we serve exists, then he can rescue us from the furnace of blazing fire. <clears throat> and he can rescue us from the power of you, the king. But even if he does not rescue us, we want you as king to know that we will not serve your gods or worship the gold statue you set up. We'll tell you, right? Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with rage, and the expression on his face changed toward Madrak, Meshach, and Abednego. He gave orders to heat the furnace seven times more than was customary. And he commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his armies to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the furnace of blazing fire. So these men in their trousers, robes, head coverings, and other clothes were tied up and thrown into the furnace of blazing fire. Since the king's command was so urgent and the furnace extremely hot, the raging flames killed those men who carried Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound into the furnace of blazing fire. So it, the fire was so hot. Now this fire was, you know, when, when fire heats metal, it turns red. And if it keeps heating it and heating it, it'll turn white and then transparent. And you'll be able to almost, almost see through it opaquely when it gets really hot. And it was so hot that the flames... The heat from the flames killed the guards who threw them in there. Amazing, huh? Okay, <clears throat> delivered from the fire. The king Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in alarm. He said to his advisors, Didn't we throw three men bound into the fire? Yes, of course, your majesty, they replied to the king. 
He exclaimed, look, I see four men, not, not tied, walking around in the fire unharmed. And the fourth looks like the son of the gods, Jesus. He looks like hmm, Jesus or of a divine being. Hmm. Son of God. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the door of the furnace, a blazing fire, and called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, your servants, you servants of the Most High God, come out. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. When the satraps, prefects, governors, and king's advisors gathered around, they saw that the fire had no effect on the bodies of these men. Not a hair of their head was singed, their robes were unaffected, and there was no smell of fire on them. Nebuchadnezzar explained, Praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his his angel and rescued his servants who trusted in him. <clears throat> they violated the king's command and risked their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I issue a decree that anyone of any people, nation, or language who says anything offensive against God, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, will be torn limb from them and his house made a garbage dump. For there is no other god who is able to deliver like this. The king then rewarded Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province, providence of Babylon. Wow, that was exciting, huh? That was like, wow. <laughs> Daniel's a great book. And we're just going to keep doing this for a while. And tomorrow, Nebuchadnezzar's proclamation, another dream. The dream interpreted, the sentence executed. Yeah, so, yeah, we're just going to keep getting excited about this book, okay? <laughs> Daniel is an exciting book. I look forward to this. And, and you could even tell in the very first chapters, he's talking about the days to come. Nebuchadnezzar, the, the king, had the dream, right? Of the stone and the iron crushing everything and being the kingdom and ruling forever. And you know he's talking about Jesus, right? Wow, that's exciting. So, there you have it. That was day 257. And it's just going to get more exciting from here. Okay. It's just going to get more exciting from here. So, so keep up. Catch on any you miss. You want to say you got the whole Bible in a year. But tomorrow we'll continue in Daniel. I'm looking forward to it. See you then.